I have a wide range of guitars and um, basses. And uh, yeah, I went into a shop to buy a Telecaster and saw um, this beautiful blue jazz and thought, is that, is that a vintage? Is that? Because I'd been looking for one for a while. And actually, for 10 years, for a while. Look, the right one, because I'd come across various ones in the past. And you pick it up, you don't plug it in, you just play it. And then you know. And I hadn't found the right one yet. And I picked it up, didn't plug it in, played it, and went, oh my god, how much is it? It doesn't matter. Here's my card. I'll have it. And so that, that, that was just, you know, I'd had everything I needed by then. But um, I've been using a 1992, I bought it. Um, I think it's a B2 um, Levingston Blade, a honey one. And that was my main base. I bought it from the shop, no endorsement or anything like that. Another thing where you don't plug it in, play it, listen to the wood, listen to how it sounds and feels. And um, was in love with it, but it, um, some people really want me to have a vintage sound, maybe a jazz sound. By choice, I would always use my blade, always. Um, but it's good to have a wide range of instruments for all jobs. So I had a P bass, a 78. I used that with uh, Paul Weller. Um, this is going back now into the 90s, early 90s. Um, and that really fulfilled the role um, I was required to provide. Uh, Paul Weller had, inter interestingly, he'd seen me do a very wide range of music on a TV show where I'd played with lots of different artists um, as part of a house band. Um, so when it came to playing in his band, um, he wanted me to do something that he'd never actually heard me do, which is his style of music with a different kind of sound. And um, I was open to that, which is actually a sign of a, I guess, successful um, backing musician or session player is that they can do what's required when needed and not to say, this is what I do, take it or leave it, but to actually accommodate what's required. So that worked out well. Um, uh, Livingston, I've mentioned them. Lake Lackland, I had a Lackland for a while when I was with Robbie Williams. That was great uh, for that job, perfect. Um, and I used the Say bass, flamboyant. Say is um, uh, custom-made guitars, basses, um, a guy called Martin Peterson out of a shop in Camden in London called The Gallery. So if any bassists are going to London, go to Camden, check out the, the gallery. It's where we all go. It's only a little shop, but it's great. It's like a little family in there. And he made a bass for me, um, which is a strange hookup because I got called up by some guys from the BBC who were doing an educational programme and they wanted um, to be seen making a bass guitar for somebody, a professional musician. And I was recommended by the um, people they had asked for somebody from. And um, so I had to go through this whole process of having a bass made for me from scratch. Hadn't got a clue what I wanted. I knew I wanted a five string. And um, Martin made it for me and chose the word, you know, and go through the whole process of choosing the facing and what pickups I needed and all of that stuff. And it did teach me a little bit more to think quite heavily about sound and pickups and what you want, single coil, double coil, one back coil, whatever. Um, so that was a good process. I still have that bass too. Um, yeah, so I've got a wide range and I've just hooked up with the modulus. I'm going to be using one of their six strings uh, because I'm branching out into a bit of solo, kind of chordal stuff. I play guitar, a little bit of guitar. I'm not a guitarist, I use it for writing. Um, so I'll be using the six string a bit more like that because I'd like to write on the bass a bit more than I do at the moment. Um, and yeah, and Levison Blade have sorted me out with a five string and four string recently and I'm using those on the Sinead O'Connor tour that I'm starting in a few uh, weeks time. Yes, my favourite bass is my 92 Honey Levinson Blade, which I've retired from the live stage now because it's so heavy. I mean, like, wow heavy. And um, I, was, uh, I was never endorsed by Blade. When I was at the Frankfurt Music Messer, 2010, I think it was, and I'd had that bass with me and I actually had a performance on a, on a live stage on that particular visit and I was playing away and it's got so bad a problem that I had with my neck and my back that my fingers spasmed when I was doing the gig which was weird because then I was like this and I was like this both hands went at the same time some kind of m main nerve thing a lot of bass players have a problem with this and I went over to Levinson with the bass and I said Mr Levinson pleased to meet you Anna Charles this bass is too heavy I love it I've been playing it for 20 years or whatever, um, can you do something? Because I really like the sound and I don't want to retire it, but I'm going to have to, but 
I don't want to retire the sound, so can you sort me out? And uh, about six weeks later, two bases came in the post. <laughs> out of the blue, you know. It was so cool. I was like, um, you know, my socks were blown off by their warmth and generosity and um, willingness to help and everything. And then when I played them, I was uh, so happy because it was what I wanted sound-wise. And um, I made a record recently. It's my first sort of solo record. And the new four-string, my Tetra blade, is the main bass on that, um, which you would have thought I would use my honey bass, but actually it's top tip. So, yeah, blade, love them. Well, I started playing instruments at school uh, when I was seven. I was playing recorder. We all were forced to start recorder whether we wanted to or not, which I thought was fantastic back then. They didn't, don't do it now in schools in London, in England. So, um, but that was why I even thought I could even play an instrument because nobody in my family plays a musical instrument and um, I wouldn't have dreamed of playing it, not at seven anyway, you know. So we were forced to learn the recorder and I had an aptitude for, for music. So I was encouraged to play clarinet. So I did that and did some sort of school stuff and loved the role of being a musician. I can't say I really loved playing the clarinet. It was really hard to play. And uh, I didn't really like the style of music we were being taught because it didn't relate to my listening at home, which was reggae, soul, funk, soca, calypso, you know, Caribbean sort of style of things and not really pop or and certainly not classical back then. Um, so then I was looking for an instrument because I wanted to be a musician now, I decided, but not a clarinetist, <laughs> no. So um, I tried various things. I, I played in still band for five years at school, which was great. Um, I played trumpet for a while, believe it or not. Doesn't work, lip gloss and, and anyway. Um, and I played guitar for a bit, but my teacher, now I'm going to say something inflammatory here, but I'm going to say it because this was the truth. He forced me to learn Beatles songs and I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't listen to the Beatles at all and my parents didn't and I couldn't relate to it. Obviously later on I came to appreciate the music but at the time as a kid I was listening to heavy reggae. I was listening to Bob Marley as well and you know just completely different stuff and it didn't relate so I didn't want to play guitar but um, anymore because of it. So what I do because I wanted to play an instrument I used to just play along with Bob Marley records what would I pick out? The bass line on the guitar. And I walked into my music lesson. I said, um, I've, I've learnt something because I taught myself a few bass lines and I wasn't taught how to, you know, ear train, no ear training or anything like that. So I thought, I felt like it was an accomplishment because I'd been reading before that. And um, came into my lesson and the uh, teacher was like, you can't play bass lines on a guitar. And anyway, if you're going to be a bass player, you have to sing because you need some harmony. And I was like, what? Oh, no, I don't want to do that. So um, he left. I've got a new, new guitar teacher, which was the best thing ever, because I then played him what I'd been doing, and he then started to teach me bass. And that was at uh, what, our secondary school, so I would have been 15, 16 then. And um, that was it, I was sold. One of my main influences, I think, was uh, Family Man Barrett from The Wailers, because as I said, I'd been picking out these bass lines from Bob Marley records, and it was his riffs. And um, those riffs are very, very melodic, and um, the role they play in the music is, is so important. It's not just supportive notes for a chord where the bass line actually, or the bass note, roots the harmony, which is what you get a lot in pop and rock. In that style of reggae, uh, specifically the Wailers, um, the, the, the arrangements, the bass line was so fundamental. And obviously the genre of music, reggae, I mean, the bass is, you know, drives the whole thing. So, um, he, but unbeknownst to me, he was influential. I was just doing what I was doing, you know. I don't play in a reggae style or anything like that, it's just my ears are tuned to that now. And Marcus Miller, because I love Luther Vandross. And um, I never learned um, a slap riff from listening to a Luther Vandross record but I know now that I loved those records because I loved the bass so much. So Marcus was massively influential. I like the way that the bass changes the, the shape, the sound of a chord and, makes, and changes the mood as well. 
So I'm say, I would say I'm influenced by that as well as, you know, Marcus and, and the Whalers bass player. I practice what I have to rehearse, unfortunately, because I don't have a lot of time. But luckily for me, some of what I have to rehearse is really complicated and tricky, so I'm learning loads when I do it. Um, what I would say if I were to do any practice at all, it would be just that I'm jamming along with something that I don't know, um, something that's testing, you know, one of the bass players that I admire, I might play along with something they've, they've done, just play along with, not learn. I don't want to learn other people's stuff um, unless I have to, because I do that for a living. You know, you know, you're often hired to play on um, a tour and you may most likely aren't the bass player who played on the record. So you've got to approximate another bass player's feel, get it right, not just learn the notes, get it right. So it feels like the performance so that nobody's looking around at the bass player going, why isn't this tune sitting the way it's sat? They want it to sit right, so you've got to learn it to a degree where you're approximating somebody else's feel and everything. Eventually it evolves into being how you've made it, but initially you've got to get it more right, more like the record. So I, for pleasure or for learning, I don't want to sit there and learn somebody else's stuff again. So I, I play along with just to use a different set of chord changes that I wouldn't have written myself. That pushes me in a different direction. Um, but most of the time it's mostly just practicing stuff I've got to play anyway. Elixir strings were providing strings for a tour I was doing with Robbie Williams and they continued to use them the whole time I was there. So I ended up using them for three years. When the tour ended, I had a, I had a pile of strings left. And when I ran out, they were free up until then. I kept buying them. Even at the high price, I did actually continue to buy them because I loved them. I play a kind of guitar style sometimes. And if you're doing that a lot, over time, you get a bit afraid. And that's been addressed now. I've been using the new nickel on uh, the Sinead O'Connor tour. Um, I've done a few gigs with them. I've been playing the hell out of them in the breaks and sound check and stuff, and they're sounding great. The coating has also been uh, developed specifically for bass now, rather than the same coating being used for acoustic, electric guitars and bass. Now it's separate. So that's gonna be a, a better thing for the uh, sound and the feel and the durability of the string.